Uh, I'm, I'm Larry, and uh, let's see if I can figure out this clicker today. And I own Voxtrax. And I've been known, uh, we, we do a lot of print and a lot of mail, but I, we also do a lot of things in the digital media as well. I'm a, basically a multi-channel marketing specialist. That's me besides owning the company. We, we started business in 1992. Back when we started the business, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, big, the big thing really was print and mail. I mean, where there was no, um, uh, there, there was hardly any internet. Uh, the, the, the college universities had it. And, uh, and the thing is, uh, and, um, you know, it was a completely different world back then. So, I mean, we used to print pallets of carbonless and uh, thousands and thousands of newspaper inserts and, uh, and, and, and lots, lots of those things. And, and early on in, the, uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in that early world, um, early on, we started looking at all the pieces that were being printed, and we said, geez. A lot of them were going to mailhouses. So finally, the first, the first expansion we, we, we made in the 19, early 1990s is I said, geez, I don't want to send all that work to a mailhouse. We built, a, we built, a, we built our own mailing, <laughs> mailing uh, customer service. And uh, then, it, then fast forward, uh, I've always been a, uh, have an engineering background and always been a student of marketing. I, I love marketing. I'm a firm believer that uh, you have to learn something every day, and I keep myself very, very, uh, uh, very strict to that. I, I try to, through tech blogs or through, uh, through, uh, through uh, where any resources I can, I try to at least keep on a learning curve for a long time. So in the early 1990s, fast forward, uh, we kind of saw the writing on the wall. The internet was good for real, right? Uh, you know, they started, things started popping up, AOL, hey, you got mail, all those type of things. And so uh, in 1995, I went, took, took an HTML class and uh, we, actually, we actually built, uh, started building websites and uh, really got into uh, starting early on website development. So that kind of gives you a little history. Fast forward today, we are a complete full service digital agency. Because now today the website is something, sometimes, sometimes the very first interaction with a brand. It really is. I think about it. Uh, it has a new, it, with a new customer and often the, this thing, existing customers interact with the brand most often. It's just, it's not another billboard. Everyone, everyone I think in this room realizes this. It actually is your brand. I mean, it's the hub of which all things cent central, uh, flow it around. And so, the thing you have to ask yourself, when your client arrives at your website, does it look like this? Is it a maze? Is it easy to navigate? Do, you, do they go where you want them to go? They, they clearly understand what you do and who you serve. Um, are, uh, do, you, do, you, do you take a look at your analytics? Are you watching your bounce rates and uh, who's visiting your site? Those, those are all very important. I don't care if you're a one-person business or a thousand-person business, and we work with both. Um, it's very, very critical, and the thing is, is that it tells really a lot about your brand, that user experience. And, and so I, when we talk about, first of all, we want to talk about the appearance of your website. Obviously, a modern website today is, it has to be responsive. There's still, uh, as of a recent study by Adobe, there's still about 38% of websites out there right now in business today that are not mobile responsive. That, that is a big penalty with Google and the whole ob object about getting engagement. Uh, if you're not doing automated uh, type of, uh, of, 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 of uh, basically acquisition through trying to, to through, through blasts and that type of uh, thing, basically people are still searching for you online. Uh, the search is very, very important. And parallax scrolling is another common uh, uh, strategy now is you want to make sure your branding and your contact information, the navigation of your, of your uh, website moves with the website. So where if, they, if you're on a single page website, wherever they go on their site, they can easily move around quickly on your website. Uh, big bold fonts, that's very, very important. Eye-catching hero images. Eye-catching hero images uh, have replaced uh, multiple, you know, multiple slides in a slideshow. I still like slideshow design, uh, but the thing is you need to find a slideshow mechanism that, has, that is basically built for SEO, that, has, uh, SE, that is S SEO capable, has the ability to set meta tags, meta descriptions in there. And the thing is you don't want, no longer want to have 10 slides, maybe two or three or four. And you, and you want to space those out, so, or better yet, leave it in control of the person visiting the site. Multimedia course is huge. Videos get, get longer time for engagement. It has to be professional. A professional website, in my opinion, has to have a, you, ha, you have to have your story on there. 
people want to know when they're interacting with what the, they still want to know how, how do how do how do, why do you do what you do why would I want to do business with you what's your history um, what what fuels you what's your mission statement photos of the staff and the facility if you watch analytics and I, I, I view a lot of analytics and a lot of sites is very very important people view those but this is still a people business, no matter what. Or even if you're online and digital, people want to see who they're doing business with. They, they, they follow these. They, these things have high, uh, high uh, if you go down into the Google drill down and look at what pages people visit, they're, they're highly visited. Customer results, testimonials are also very, very popular things to have on your site. Clarity, again, easy to navigate. Drop down menus, breadcrumbs, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of breadcrumbs. So wherever they were last, they can easily get back to. Uh, single page scroll is pretty popular now, especially with mobile. That's where you have basically everything, everything that you really need to have is all in one, one scroll on the, on the home page. Load time, load time is huge folks. Uh, when it comes to Google Analytics now. If you, if you have a site that takes longer than four seconds to load, you are, you, are being, uh, you are being penalized by Google, and that is one thing Google will admit in their complicated uh, ro robotics, and I've been a dealer, an agency for dealer for Google for 10 years. I know Google very, very well, <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, is that load time is a, is a critical factor nowadays. So you have to optimize your image sizes. So if you're not doing your well on website, somebody else is doing it, and it's loading slow, you need to beat up on them a little bit, or think about a new provider. Um, remove autoplay multimedia. You don't want videos to launch by themselves. Leave it in the user's control. That JavaScript slows the heck out of a site, especially on a, on a mobile ne on the network. And make sure uh, that you do not have a lot of extra white space. You'd be surprised how many times people come to me with a speed issue on their website and I find out their designer has left all kinds of white spaces. Also, there's a lot of templates on GoDaddy, Wix, uh, that, that, that they're uh, nothing against those folks and they're, they're good providers, but they, but there's some, a lot of, t it's very easy in their drag and drop layouts to, 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 to leave, to leave uh, unwanted white space. And if you're not going under the hood and not looking at the script, you're not gonna see that. You're not gonna see that from the drag and drop editors. Because you know what? used to say that speed kills. Well, slow speed kills, kills your website performance and user, uh, and user, uh, and user uh, experience. A couple of websites you can write down uh, that I really like. GT Metrics is free, and Pingdom is, uh, you get 14 days free. They're about, really about the same. But go ahead and, me and, and you should be measuring, everyone in, who has a website in this uh, room should be going to these sites and finding out how their load speeds are. It's, it's very, very critical nowadays. And uh, it'll give you a list of things that, how to fix it. It's, and, it's, and it's free. And the thing is, is that things change very, very fast. I'll tell you, in this world. Uh, we just updated a server that happens to have my own website on at Liquid Web, our, our server provider, from Apache 3 to Apache 4, right? Apache 4 had it, now that's, that's gonna be mandatory in about, just letting you know, probably about six to nine months. But we wanted to get ahead of the game, right? So the thing is, is that uh, there, there, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, different ways Apache 4 deals with a lot of, uh, a lot of plugins and some accesses. And so I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you here, this is my very own. I only got a C. Now, C's okay. I'll, I'll take a C from any of yours, but that, that's not okay for me. I got a C and a B on this rating. Because why? Two weeks ago, I was A. A, a and B plus. What changed? I don't know if you can see this here, but, they're, but, they, but basically, we're scoring an F here on, on, on basically a new type of uh, compression uh, enable page that Apache 4 is, has, is running now on the servers. And even the server engineers at Liquid Web have not gone through and, and, and checked all that. Now, I still, you know, 3.6 seconds, I think we were down in the twos before. It's not critical, but the fact of the matter is, if you're one of those people who never check their speed, it's been, I mean, I mean, Obama was president in his first term the last time you had any updates done on your website, okay? Uh, you've you, you, you got all kinds of these issues going on, and it is going to hurt your, it's going to hurt your performance. Con because uh, speed also leads to better conversions. What else leads to better conversions? All these things lead to better conversions. Easy navigation. Uh, but, you know, I like to see color consistent with your other marketing messages, whether you're mailing out or your email marketing. Uh, make sure it's a KISS principle. Basically, keep everything simple. 
Remember to keep it as simple as possible for someone to get into your website, move around, and get what they need. Faces. I love faces on websites. I'll show you some examples of some sites we built. Minnesota School of Beauty, we use their own students, uh, uh, were used, and their own clients were used throughout the website. Um, uh, same, I love staff pages. Uh, here's an a airline site that we did that has their staff, uh, a private airline uh, site that we have has their staff on. I really, if you get a chance, I really, really want to promote that you do that rather than just pick stock images. If you don't have that, we can use some stock images that, that match the demographics you're trying to reach. But the thing is, is that it's been proven a fact that faces attract conversion. Because why? Because people like to do, they, 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 they basically inject themselves in that, in that picture or see, see that's something that gives a positive uh, effect on, it, on, on, on the experience. So faces are very, very important. Uh, you know, products are important too, but if you're going to have product photos, I like to have product photos that, are, that show someone using the product or a video showing someone using the product. It really, really uh, sets a good sub subconscious tone. Because here, how does your, you have to ask yourself, how does your site's design impact customer experience? That's, it's, a, it's, it's very, very important. Is it positive? The right customers will feel that your business is for them. They'll want to read more content on your website, more likely to initiate a contact. Is that, that, that's what I call that. Be, that'd be, that's ideal, a positive experience, of course. Is it neutral? The right customers feel iffy about whether your business is, is for them. They may or may not move to contact you, or you may attract customers that are not a good fit. You will lose some leads to your competitors if your website is neutral. And if it's negative, the right customers take a look at your website, move on because something just doesn't feel right. It may be on conscious level. That's why you need to have metrics in place. But they perceive that your business is not a good fit, large numbers of them turn away, or the wrong customers are attracted to your business. This is, this is what that's very, we talk about in the article, uh, you know, UX, user experience. User experience is still very, very big in the success and performance of your website. And how do you, know, how, how do you find that out? Well, it, I'm a, you have to have Google Analytics or some analytics running on your website. And either you fi hire someone like me, or maybe an Angel does this a little bit too, but can do a a analytics review, I'm not sure. But the fact is you find someone who understands analytics and they understand who, who, who you're trying to reach. And we make sure through a couple things. Um, first, the bounce rate is very, very important. That bounce rate is, means are they coming to your site and leaving? If they come to your site and leave right away, that's a bounce. Okay. How long do they stay on your site? Those, the, these two right here are very, very important uh, um, to me, very, very important metrics. Those, the, 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 whenever, whenever we can improve those, that, 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 that's, a, that's a very, very good task. Another thing is very, very important is your audience section of Google Analytics. Because the audience section gives you a chance to get a chance to see exactly um, so if you have it set up right and you've got some direct tracking codes in place, you can actually see the demographics and you can also see uh, the, what type, whether they come in on mobile or desktop. That might, that might t t have some determination of how you plan your uh, website strategies. And it shows their behavior. Uh, it shows uh, which sites they, they, they have frequent. It shows basically a breakdown of, 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 of their pattern, of which how their workflow, their, their flow through, their, through your website. It's very, very important. So Google Analytics is very, very important to find out whether or not your website is providing that user experience. SEO, search engine optimization. I'm going to give you a quick tip. This is a do-it-yourself, five minutes or less. Now, I, this doesn't replace a full-blown SEO, but I'm going to show you a trick to find out exactly in five minutes that anyone can do in this room to find out exactly how, 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 how Google is seeing your site and how many, what pages they are seeing. Everybody ready for that? First of all, you visit Google.com and you type in site colon your domain dot com. Don't, don't make a mistake that put site dot. It's got to be site colon your domain dot com. And that will bring up a page. Here's mine. <laughs> uh, it will bring up a page and basically every single page that Google sees with, uh, that is related to, your, that, related to that domain will be listed. Now what you're looking now, now sometimes, I mean I've had people who literally have paid online services $300 a month for 12 months 
and they did not have their website indexed properly with Google. We've done this test and they don't come up at all. That's the, to me, that's robbery, okay? <laughs> the thing is, is that uh, in, uh, setting the index of your site is, is the number one absolute positive number first step of any SEO. Another thing you'll learn from this is that if you have a lot of garbage, some, a lot of the templated sites produce a lot of garbage pages. So you start going through this and all of a sudden you see all these pages that were, that were left on by the drag, drag and drop editors and you'll see all these garbage pages with all this extra blah, 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 you know, gibberish on it that don't make sense to anyone. You might even see if you have a blog uh, on your page, you might even see where some people have hacked into your site or, or, or using your, your site as a, uh, using your uh, site as a uh, forwarder. So it's very, very important that you do this and take a look at, the, at that and that you're going to want to go in and either hire someone or do it yourself, <laughs> but you're going to go in and first of all clean up, cl clean up those garbage pages and then make sure, uh, make sure your, your site is being indexed properly with Google. There's, all, there's, there's advice on how to do that, set up your own Google Master Toolbox and go in and do that or you can hire, hire, hire a professional agency like Foxtrax and we can go in and do that for you. But the thing of the matter is this is very, very clear. This is the very first step. And this is, a, everyone needs to know this and uh, it's one of the most important things you can do. Another very important URL I want you to remember is SiteLiner.com. SiteLiner.com, because Google gives you a penalty for duplicate content. So you don't want to have a lot of duplicate content on a website. SiteLiner.com is a fantastic URL. It's free, okay? And it, it, does, it does two things. It gives you a report of any duplicate content it also gives you a report of any broken links, which Google doesn't like either, for, and nor, nor, nor do your cl clients. And so th there's a it's a very, very valuable uh, uh, tool. And so I highly recommend SiteLiner.com. So uh, that, that a couple of tips for you when it comes to SEO. And then from there, it's a whole subject. I, we, 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 could, we could talk all after evening here on SEO. It's, it gets, we go past there, it gets much, much deeper. But, but the key is, when we come back to that user experience, you have to be relevant, right? Isn't that we all we want to be relevant in our lives, relevant to the people around us, our customers? Relevancy is huge. And your site's contents needs to be relevant. For example, to human users and to web crawlers. Those are the two things that we achieve in every goal when we sit down with a website. We want to make sure that your content is relevant to the human users and it's relevant to the web crawlers. Those are, those are two very important masters to serve. The client, the potential client, and the people who are Googling, Googling for your product or service in Google. Know your audience, know your customer's personas. To market a product or service properly, and this goes through anything. If, we're doing, if, I, if I sit down with someone, we're talking about a direct mail campaign, we're talking about a new logo design, we're talking about Facebook advertising, anything we're talking about, we always end up saying, okay, who, who is the, who's, who's your prime market profile? What is, it, what is your ideal customer look like? And for that, we can, you know, that in the fan, another word for that is persona. To market a product or service properly, the first thing you must do is get a clear on who your ideal customer, ideal customer is, where they are hanging out. That comes very important with Angel said about getting engaged with social media. You want to find out where, where they're hanging out, right? You know, if, if they're hanging out on Snapchat, then you better be on Snapchat. They're, if, they're, if they're highly in a consultatory professional industry and they're, then linked and they're engaged in groups on LinkedIn, then you need to be engaged in groups on LinkedIn. You know, so the thing is, it's very important and what their challenges are because I think she, she had a very, she, I, I love her, uh, her questions about, about the business. That's a very, that's a very, very, the white paper that I love that idea. The thing is, is that because that's all about dealing with their challenges because if 10 people ask that question, they obviously have a challenge, and some of them, as we know, they don't, don't know exactly what their challenges are yet. That's why those 10 questions they should ask was very, very good. I, I think you did a very good job on that because, you know, personas, they could be anywhere. I mean, our, our market could be all kinds of what, you know, demographics they could be. A composite sketch of a key segment of your audience, that's a persona. For, for content marketing purposes, you need personas to help you deliver content that will be most relevant and useful to your audience. 
Buyer personas are fictional. They're generalized representations of your ideal customers. They help you understand your customers and prospective customers. And they basically allow you, again, the content, that, uh, the content to their behaviors, to their needs, and their concerns. So, the biggest question I always get asked, yeah, but if they're fictional, how, how, how in the world do I set up a persona? How do, I, how do I set up profiles for my clients if you tell, tell me, Larry, that they're fictional? Well, you have, to, you have to actually get your current clients, or if you're a startup business, you need to, you need to interview your competitor's client number one, two, or three clients, and you've got to find out what their personas are. And for that, uh, I love Digital Marketer. I'm a member. Uh, that's a training group and a group of users uh, 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 that has some great information online for agencies. And this is a form that I that I borrow from from their library, and it's very very good. And we and don't worry, we're not being sexist. There's a female one as well, even though the questions are completely <laughs> the same. But it talks about their goals and values. It talks about the sources where they get their information. It talks, of course, obviously their age, their gender, the basic demographics, where they live, their occupation, their annual income, education, uh, challenge and pain points, so forth and so on. Now, it, now you may say, well, geez, a customer's not going to want to sit down and, 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 and give me all that information, right? Well, you got you to be a little bit creative and may, you got to kind of work. You maybe, maybe you do this in a series of, you know, two or three lunches or a couple of drinks or uh, at happy hour, but you do this in a series of uh, a, 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 over a length of time to try to build up your, your ideal client's personas. Because the thing is, if they're your ideal clients, obviously you've, you've, you've dealt with their challenge and pain points. Now, it's going to really make sense when we start engaging a, a, a deeper marketing uh, uh, campaign and start looking for, we're going to want to look for more people just like them, right? I mean, it's just, it's not rocket science. If, if, your, if your services and, and business and your products solve this person's needs and they have similar demographic uh, or his, historical backgrounds, educational backgrounds, income back, backgrounds, it's going to make you a lot easier to find your most ideal clients. See, I, I'm a little, uh, may, maybe I'm a little old school and I, and I you know, and I, like I said, I, would, I, I, I coach email marketing a little bit different. We do email marketing. I would never buy an email list. That's just my own personal opinion. You've got you to you gotta develop your own email list of opted in people that, 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 that want to hear and see for, hear from you. Um, because, I mean, I know it can be successful. I'm not questioning that. But the thing is, is that what, what, I, what, we, what, we, what I try to do, my clients try to deal with, with people that, uh, where they're, you know, the, you, you begin an engagement with, with a high probability of, 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 of that, that that's, what, that's what they're looking for. Because uh, me too, I don't believe in wasting time, but it's a little bit different strategy. But, but anyway, that's, but you, you, you build a lot of that stuff on, on, uh, on, on, on basically setting up your personas. Here's a, here's a, here's a trick, okay, to really dig down deeper. What, while you're doing these interviews or while you're developing these personas, remember the phrase, but no one else would. But no one else would. My, yield, my ideal customer would read this book, but no one else would. Now, obviously, other people would, but we're, we're, we're doing this as an exercise to really, really get down on, 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 on what, what their likes and dislikes, what some of those challenges and pain points might be. My ideal customer would subscribe to a magazine. What magazine? But no one else would. My ideal customer would attend a conference. You know, maybe they would attend a, uh, I don't know, a uh, website development conference, and if you're going after website developments, well, obviously the, uh, the, the you know if you're if you're in the web website development tool business, uh, that that would be very very popular. Popular probably it wouldn't help you out if they were uh, you know a bar manager, okay? But so the thing is, is that this is one way to to put to try to put a more drill down on the on the persona on the persona exercise. There's also negative personas, and I also believe that. Uh, I know when I sit down, I have, I have my, our own. We've got, a, we've got the customers we don't want to attract. People always without a budget. I mean, I don't mind helping people with little, 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 little budgets, but they've got to have some budget, <laughs> okay? And, you know, and, 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 or if they're unethical or if they're in, you know, we don't, you know, we don't do things in the adult industry, uh, 
film industry or anything like that. I would never touch anything like that. Uh, but, but you know, so but whatever whatever yours is, you you want to also develop your negative persona. So that's all that's all helps as you develop your marketing message. These are the people you don't want to target. Another another thing I really want to talk about, I think, is a big tip. If you haven't, if you're thinking about starting a new website or you're going to uh, branch off into a new company or something like that, really, really try to co connect your brand with your domain name. That's one tip I have for you. It's very, very important um, because the thing is, is that uh, uh, it just it just helps in the overall. It's, it's e e e you get locked in their memory, solid. It just helps in your overall. Uh, uh, um, presentation, your overall brand, brand, brand power, so to speak. Ident identify your niche and be unique. This is a website that we do for International Society of Aviation Photographers. Okay? It's a very complex site. It has membership site. It's a membership site. It's a multi-site. It's very, very big. And it's a, it's a, it was a lot of work. It was not a, it was not a $500 website or a, even a $5,000 website. It was much more than that. But the thing is, is that, um, but the, th but see right there in the title, right in the, in, in there in the H1 tag, aviation is seen by photographers. We got their, we got their unique niche right, right there in the header of the, of the website. This, this really, really, this, this is the, the tip. And, and the thing is, is that when you talk about identify your niche and be unique, it's not about just the SEO coding, but it's also about the fact is, is that
particular social media strategy, I, 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 we, we, we find them place, we, we find them the best places, we do some research, find out where their competitors are, we do a competitive analysis, and we help them build, build their own social media strategy. Then I encourage that they hire an intern or, or maybe get some couple people in their staff that really can help tell their story. I mean, we got a couple that we do a little more than that for, but that, I'm, that's not a good fit for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not as deep as a, as a full, full social media agency, don't claim to be. We're, we're, we're pretty darn good at SEO, but we've got SEO budgets that start at $99 a month uh, very competitively, but you know, we're not a full-blown SMC Pro, uh, for example, downtown. I mean, if you really, really want to get deep into SEO and you want to spend a few thousand dollars a month, we're probably not the agency for, for, for you. But we are a single source provider, and a lot of the clients we uh, work with, uh, we either do one of these things, we do two or three of these things, or we do all of these things. And the, and the fact of the matter is, is they really appreciate having one call. They're, they're, it's one call. They typically deal with me or, or, or Pete in our office. Uh, so we got a very, we, we've got a very small, dedicated people who care about you. They, 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 we know the clients. We, we understand the, uh, we understand their, their challenges. And so it's a little, it's, it's re really is ta tailored well to small businesses. We're, uh, we, we've, we've been, like I said, we've been doing the Google AdWord campaigns for a long time. We've been a Google dealer for 10 years. We've had some very good success with Google AdWords. I approach Google AdWords a little bit different. I believe that the fir first of all, you don't need to spend you don't need to spend a ton of money to make an impact. Instead, let's research, let's test, let's look for long tail keywords. Let's let's let, you know let's find some value in there. I mean, nobody wants to pay thirty-five or forty dollars a click. Okay, it's it, it's silly. Uh, I'm going to finish with this comment, and I think one thing is is that when people look at marketing, they uh, a lot of times we, small business owners especially, or even medium-sized business owners. They kind of take a look at, at marketing and advertising, and the first thing that they try to, they gets trapped in their mind, or, or what are the large corporations doing? Okay? But you got to remember, large, large corporations, first of all, they're, they're trying to impress stockholders. They're trying to, uh, you know, look, look get good against their competitors. They usually have lots of resources and much bigger budgets than many of my clients do. And so I usually will say, you know what? I'm sorry, but marketing on a, a large corporation level is sometimes very dumb because they, 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 they don't understand. I mean, they, they can spill a whole lot of milk, okay? Most small business and medium-sized clients do not have the budget to go and spill all that milk, okay? So the thing is, is that you don't want you, you to basically fashion your, 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 your marketing strategy or, or try, try to do what they're, they're doing. I mean, I, lo I love what, what, what Angel's doing there. I think that, that's very, very smart. The uh, thing is, is that, you know, find, find the tools that, that, are, that are affordable and workable. And because the thing is, is that, um, you, know, in the, um, you know, in the 1800s when they had the gold rush, do you know that there actually was more money made off selling gold, the supplies to gold miners and the gold mining tools than anyone ever made in gold. Look it up, it's true. There was more money made in selling, the, selling to the gold miners, the picks, the shovels, the dynamite, the, uh, the, the outfitters. They, there was a lot, my, I saw, thought of the figure, it was somewhere around two, two times, two and a half times, than any gold that was ever extracted out of the ground. And, and I think a lot of that fa falls happens today in the digital marketing world. There's lots of ways to spend your money. I mean, every, every day, if I used to email and you, hey, spend, you know, sign up for this, $300, $500, HubSpot. I love HubSpot too, but are you kidding? $5,000 a month? You gotta be kidding me. I mean, I mean, small businesses, they just don't have that, that kind of budget. Besides that, once you get these tools, the fact of the matter is, is that you still, you still need to, to, to wrap yourself into them and still need to be engaged in them in some, in some degree and, and manage the outcome. And so the thing is, is that, so I really encourage small to medium sized businesses, you know, first of all, set up your object, ob objectives, find out what you really want to do. Maybe there's only two or three of these things that you can afford at this time, okay? Find out what's most important on that list and, you know, either work with myself or other suppliers and uh, other, other providers, uh, uh, you know, seek some professional help so you can do what you do and let us do what we do and, 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 and you know, and, and measure, measure, measure. That's the last thing that make sure you don't do anything unless you've got a measurement device in place. You want to know 
the, 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 you're not a large corporation. You don't, you don't have to uh, say, this looked good to stockholders, right? You, there's only one thing you need your marketing and advertising to do, and that's, and that's, that's to create more business. And if it's not doing that, then, then I, I'd say, you know, throw it out. I tell, you know, I have the first, I'm the first to tell a client if, if, if we're doing something that's not working, then we need to stop doing it and do something different. Because I, the last thing we want to do is take, take anyone's money if we're not providing results. That, uh, that's, not, that's, that, that, that's not why I'm here. So, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be in front of you today. And uh, do you have any questions? Sure. We'll go back to it. How's that? It's not that long of a slide. Well, if anybody wants a uh, copy of Larry's, you, you will share copies of your... Sure. Computer. No, yeah, you got it on your computer. It's, it's, it's yours. Pick up Larry's card and ask for it. Yeah, let's see. Let's go back to here. Anyway, it, it is, it, it's just the uh, site. Uh, it's just site call. I'll just put it up there so you can write it down. Site call in your domain whatever your domain is, dot com. And what does that do again? Basically, it's, 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 going, to, it's going to show you every uh, page that Google has indexed that are related to that domain, to your, your website. And it's very, very important because, you know what, I, have, I, I get people all the time come to me, uh, Larry, uh, nobody's finding us on Google. Well, yeah, we, we do this, and guess what? They're, yeah, they're not because you know, it could it could be a technical reason. There might be a no follow on the page. There may be there, there may be some broken links. There there could be lots of there. I could give you a, a, a list of a hundred things that why it could be happening. But it's important that it doesn't happen. Yes. When you had the slides up when you were talking about the avatars. Yes. What's the domain? Where do you go to, to find that information? Well, that actually you'd have to be actually a member of that that. <coughs> agency group to, to get that but I, I if you uh, if you want that avatar worksheets I'd be happy to send them to you just give me your business card yep yeah not a problem I was just wondering what your thoughts are on uh, Yext. pardon me on Yext yeah. um, you're talking about using it for their listing services well I mean I spoke to them today for example and they're telling me for four hundred forty nine dollars a year Yeah. What, yeah. Four or five are really the main ones. Yeah. Four or five are really the main ones. Their marketing to me was um, the way Google looks at it is that's backlinks. How many, how many search engines there are, and they take that information and that drives you up the, up the ladder. So yeah. I mean, backlinking is important, but backlinking that no one that no one goes to has has a weak. Ha, ha, really, it's it's kind of like. Um, I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't do a lot for your SEO because the fact is, is that having the backlinks out there, yeah, I suppose there, there, there's, there's, there's some small degree percentage that Google will, will, will see that as, as, as being a, a relative, or well, relevancy and well distributed. But there really are. He's absolutely right. There are four or five. And you know what? You can actually yourself, if you can spend just a little bit of time, yeah, if you, you you could certainly make sure. The first thing to do is to is to is to make sure. Obviously, you claimed your Google local page. That's your number one. And the second thing is you want to make sure you go to the directory and make sure that your you, everything's correct on your Bing listing. Those are the big two. You know, then there's uh, then there's the uh, yellow uh, the web yellow pages, super pages. That's another important one. Man Manta is, is used fairly. Uh, Fairly, I like that one. Uh, there, you know, there's a, there, there's a, there's a, you know. But the thing is, is that realistically, if you would spend, I don't know, even if you have very little uh, computer skills, and if you looked into it a little bit, if you would spend an afternoon on it, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you could get those those, those listings updated yourself. That's my feeling. Now, uh, all those other 70 ones, I mean. You have to weigh. I, I've, uh, I do that work for clients. Um, we normally charge uh, uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our normal $99 SEO per month package. We'll go through and do the updating for $15 a listing. Um, the um, uh, again, uh, if you really, if you look at your analytics and find out if there's any referrals coming from those sites, there are very, very few referrals ever come from those some, some of those sites. I mean, that some of those sites they could be, they could have your own wrong address, your wrong phone number, and 
uh, uh, on there for years, and probably it really wouldn't make a huge it wouldn't make a huge it wouldn't make an impactual difference as as, as doing something proactive, and that. Uh, Yeah, it it does do that. Yep, yeah, there 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 is there, there is some there is some strength to that. I uh, my personal feeling. I don't know if it's if it's if it's uh, if it's if it's worth that money. I've uh, like I said. I um, 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 there there there's there. Y P is another one who does that uh, uh, as well. Um, again, it's um, it's it, as far as the overall weighting, as far as things that you can do for your website. I think uh, you know. Going through and setting up a, a Google Master, a Google Webmaster account, and then taking a look at uh, basically your site crawl and find out whether or not the uh, whether there's anything broken. Doing this little simple test I show you, I showed you is, is, is I mean those those things are all going to weigh a lot heavier on. And then I mean where where do you biz, do business? Sir? Are you business? Are you international, national, or just or lo local? And actually having your local listing uh, up to speed. Uh, and uh, and and having that 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 working well, um, yeah, I, uh, it's your it's your money, but I I would question the value of, of, of that. I people ask me that all the time, and I tell them exactly what I think. Um, is there no value? No, there there probably there's a little value. There's, I mean, Google Google keeps a, a lid on the, back in the last in the last year they have have had over 500 changes on their al al algorithm. And the fact is, is that, and they, and they, you know, and they, they keep a pretty tight lid about really how things are weighed. But I can tell you from working on a lot of these sites and looking at analytics every month, and helping people with their SEO, uh, things that really matter uh, are are things, uh, you know, uh, having obviously backlinking from videos, having the time people spend on the site. Uh, having proper content in, in, in the site is very, very important. Not having any broken links is very, very important. Page load speed is very, very important. SSL certificates are very, very important now. Uh, Google will, will, uh, will, will discount your site if they think it's unsafe. You want to make sure you have an SSL running uh, or you're on a ser uh, server where there's a blanket SSL running. Um, I'm hoping they'll change that, but uh, you know, it just happened that they bought Condor, the largest SSL, uh, a couple years ago. They uh, they bought they bought Condor, the largest SSL subscriber. So they figured, why not, you know, why not why not leverage everybody in the world to get an SSL? Um, but uh, and then really that mobile. If your website is not mobile, that's 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 huge. It's huge for so many reasons. Not only from how Google sees it, but imagine, you know, your client, you're you're you're, try you're asking your client to try to find out. Whether they want to do business with you on a tiny little three and a half inch screen, uh, it's just it's just it's just not user friendly, in my opinion. Thank yeah. you so much, Larry. Yep. Okay.